welcome, welcome. Hey guys. So nice Michael, Michael, through. please, um, we are here. We're all excited to be hearing from you. So please introduce yourself, tell us who you are, where you live, what do you do, and start your presentation. The ball is yours. Sure, that's awesome. Yeah, no, so I, from what I understand from Julie, this is uh, recorded and it goes, it just stays on YouTube and everything, so that's it's, awesome. It's, it's being broadcast live right now to YouTube. Yeah, you know, I was watching before. They're you know remarkable students. I mean, that's that's you know before I get, I'm a I'm my founder of this company, uh, Pico Solutions Group, and we uh, we focus on STEM education and additive manufacturing. So we are oh, very. Yeah, so I heard you guys talk about three D printing. So that's, yeah, that's well, well. <laughs> and so you'll you'll get a little bit of that within the section, not a little bit, a lot, because that's actually my core focus. Excellent, um, excellent. For, you know, prerequisite or you know setting up kind of what I'm going to be doing is going over the fact that what coding was years ago, design is now. Yep. And, and that's my belief. And uh, I practice what I preach. I'll, I'll explain that uh, in detail in the presentation. So yeah, I've been doing actually ed tech for 15 years. And so uh, we've kind of manifested over time into pretty, uh, pretty fun stuff, <laughs> to say the least. And what I'll be um, showcasing today is um, our newest initiative and the biggest one of my life um, that we'll be launching in fall 2023. So September of uh, the new school year coming up. Um, and so ultimately going to show you kind of a little bit of the journey, uh, today, and then uh, what we're trying to do for kids, um, is, you know, I've been doing this with my own, my son is 10. He's been doing CAD since he was five and he's been exposed to 3d printing since he was three. <laughs> so it's been, uh, it's been a journey for him. And, um, so at the end of it, I'll explain what he's going to be doing, uh, which will showcase kind of what can happen. Right. And so let me, uh, you know, let me get right into it. And I will start sharing my screen. I just want to make sure I'm in presentation mode here. And I'm on the right slide, of course, right? <laughs> I'm not too used to Zoom. I use uh, Google Hangout notoriously. But there we go. And let me go back to Zoom and do the screen recording. So as I'm going, since there is only just a couple of us, I mean, I know it's, it's being broadcasted, but uh, feel free to ask me questions if something just pops in your head. But I do have Q&A, uh, of course, at the end. And some people will be joining us. So there'll be no, people popping in. Don't worry. No There's worries. Well. Okay, we see, your, we see your screen. Wonderful. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Let me minimize this. All right, fantastic. All right, so uh, this presentation today is going to be about the Pico STEM Club. Um, again, it says it right there. It's about empowerment, and it's all about DFAM. And DFAM is becoming a more and more popular term right now. And I'd like to just enlighten people on it. It's designed for added manufacturing. And added manufacturing is AKA 3D print. Um, and people need to get more familiar with it being added to manufacturing than 3D printing because 3D printing is just the tool, right? There's different types of technologies, but the actual process that goes into all of it needs to be understood as you need to design. And added manufacturing is the actual industry that you end up doing it for. And so, uh, if you need to contact me, you can feel free to send my team and I uh, contact at BigoSolutions.com, uh, Viz on LinkedIn, or on Instagram. Those are our two main platforms that we use. And I also have a, a business WhatsApp, uh, and there's a number right there. Uh, feel free to contact us anytime. Um, we work with people around the world. I've, been, I've done business in over 140 countries uh, in my lifetime since my college dorm room. So, you know, feel free. And uh, we have staff all over the world, actually. So it's it's uh, quite a quite an interesting time. So moving forward right now, now hopefully this is going to work. Yeah, there we go. Got to go here. So this is a little bit about Pico Solutions Group. Um, and this is our mission and our vision. And ultimately, we actually started up, uh, you know, back uh, in the day as an education company. We still are, but we're starting to really focus more and more on our mission. And that's about creating a world where everything is made locally. And that is something that I personally have a passion for because it correlates with sustainability. And as I was hearing you guys on the last call, you know, with the wind turbines and things like that, I've been doing that again since college dorm. That's how I started. It was a hobbyist wind turbine that I actually acquired as a company in my dorm room and turned it into a STEM education company. And over time, everything has kind of become more and more about what you're about to see. So I actually have a, a book that we're writing around the, called The Pico Journey. And that's something I should touch upon. It's very, very quite important. You're going to see Pico a lot. 
Pico is actually, my wife and I are both entrepreneurs and it's our core values. It means proactive, not reactive. Innovation is empowering, customer over profit and optimistic mindset. It's how we operate this business, any brand or any business that we own and anybody that we partner with. That's how we are and that's how we engage. So moving on, this is the history. So it started off uh, back in 08. I'm in my 30s. I graduated in 08, um, but my first, this company, you know, originally started out of there, Pico Turbine International. We were mainly doing educational, again, wind turbines, solar kits, sustainability was the core focus, doing a lot of outreach in schools. Over time, we actually accidentally fell into 3D printing, doing rapid prototyping because we ended a life cycle on our product, right? The product life cycle eventually happens, right? So we figured out a way to use 3D printing to rapid prototype. We manufactured overseas then, and that was during 2012 and 13. And then we realized the importance of this. So we started working with schools to help educate them on for a couple of years. And so we decided to found Pico Tech Institute. So we started a school. Fortunately, the school was a little ahead of its time. If it was happening right after the pandemic, it would have been a perfect time, right? tend to have a, a, a track record for three years ahead. And right now is the best time to be in design or 3D printing if you if you want to explore it a little bit. So going from there, over what we learned from that, we have all this educational curriculum, we give it away to schools, we have great solutions. And, but yet we knew we had to move to the next step of what additive manufacturing and 3D printing was about. So we started Pico Solutions Group to localize our own products. Something that I wanted to do the day I touched the 3D printer, but my engineers told me, no, Mike, you can't do it yet. The technology is not there. But I saw the future in 2012. And by the end of 2022, I have fully materialized that vision. All of our products are now made 100% in the United States for 33 to 50% less than China based on our process. And that is what we're moving into now is we're sharing that philosophy that process and our skills with educators, entrepreneurs, and students. And that is where now we are heading into Pico STEM Club since I've been working with K-12 and universities for well over 15 years. And so our goal is to teach at least 1 million kids, students CAD. We've already taught nearly 100,000 of them in my lifetime. But the fact of the matter is I want to kind of get a little deeper into it and start off there. And as we grow our partnerships, I think that number will mean nothing in the long run. There's 50, over 50 million people in the United States, students for that matter, a year that need to be educated. And if we can touch just a little bit of that, we'll hit our 1 million very quickly. Now, obviously this is a global opportunity, so we can do even more of that, more with that. So moving forward, it's all about, again, DFAM, Design for Additive Manufacturing Empowerment, right? What I've seen it do for kids is why we're starting the Pico STEM Club. When you start to understand design from this, th this perspective, you start to think differently. So whether you're going to be a designer, engineer, utilizing those skills, it doesn't matter. You could be an accountant. You will think differently and you will be able to problem solve faster than anyone else because you're able to see things from different perspectives, perspectives because design makes you do that. There's a lot of theories behind that that can back that up, but I see it in, in the reality of what our results are. So now this is about the club that we're starting with schools. And these are the club benefits that we're, we're promoting and, and pushing out. Um, our goal ultimately is to get all of this sponsored and make it completely and utterly free, but there's barely any cost to it, to be honest, based on the program design. Right now, we're focused on three seasons of design challenges. So there's two seasons of actually design challenges. One goes focused 100% on product design. And that's the, that's the after you've pretty much had a practice problem solving design challenges. Now you move into the product design phase so you can actually use all those skills that you acquired over the two seasons prior to that to actually accomplish it. And then we have the internships that can come about. We actually have been working with as young as uh, high school and sophomores. And we still have uh, one working in our office right now as an associate and another one that went off to college and landed an amazing lab job because of the skills that she acquired during her time with us. So it feels pretty great. Um, and it shows, again, what it can do for people. Uh, the next level 3D printing design school fundraising, that I'll explain further in the next slides. But the fact of the matter is the current fundraising atmosphere and, and the things that are being offered to schools 
schools aren't working. My own kids get a dollar for a $20 pie that they sell. I'm just like, that doesn't make sense. All the effort that goes into that. So we've created a process where we're going to teach every kid in the school that's part of the STEM club. And in, in one, one fee for the entire school to be part of this, so we teach every kid CAD and they can design whenever they want and submit it to us. And we will make it a product, something that can be available on a marketplace exclusive to them. And they'll get 25% of that towards their, their clubs and any other things they want to do in their school that they unfortunately might not have the funds for. Um, the other la the last part is for the teachers. We're going to be giving away, and I'm donating this personally, tens of thousands of dollars to start. And once we get sponsors, we hope that will be a lot more. So, But it's all centered around DFAM, Design for Added Manufacturing, STEM, Ed Tech. Those are more or less buzzwords, but they're all interrelated in what we're, we're trying to accomplish. So moving forward, um, we have our categories. Uh, we have the elementary and middle school. I'm combining those uh, to keep it simple. And then we have the seasons. Sorry, we're also going to have um, a, high, so a high school and a college. And we will have a fall and winter seasons. Um, and those are the, the design challenges. So they're going to just be given an opportunity to solve something, figure it out and work as a team, or they can work individually, depending on their personality types. Because some people just unfortunately can't work in a team environment. And that's actually okay. We have to get more and more used to that because everyone's different. And we need to make sure that we support everyone in their unique way of learning and doing things. Uh, so we'll have the fall and winter. And then the spring season, again, is back to the product design. And then we're also going to have monthly webinars. And it's going to be a day in the life of someone in DFAM, right? Working for Siemens, who knows? I, I have contacts at different companies. I'm just naming a big one in particular off the top of my head that I would love to see students have a webinar to just find out what are they doing? So they understand what it's possible once they have these skills, where they might be able to go and what opportunities exist in the real world. The pictures here is from our, our biggest initiative, which we had at Jersey City Public Schools. And that's where I'm located. I forgot to mention that earlier today. Um, so I'm in Jersey City, New Jersey, right side of, outside of Manhattan. And this on the bottom is actually from our high school program that we're doing with um, an urban school, an urban, it's called Urban League. So we did an outreach program to teach them CAD skills. And actually the one all the way on the left worked for us for four years. Um, in our program. And now he's going on to, to be an engineer and, and designer. So moving forward here, uh, this is the next level of the school fundraising I was explaining earlier. We're going to teach the younger kids Tinkercad, which you were mentioning earlier, which you can do the Tinkercad for the design, or you can do it for the Tinkercad circuits, which is amazing, right? So you combine the two, it's endless opportunities for them. Uh, so we'll be doing about 90 minutes uh, virtual, and we're going to be giving them support materials that they can go on their own, whether it's the student or teachers, um, and if they have time, you know, the, during regular class or an after school programs, et cetera. Um, and then for the high school, we believe the Fusion 360 is a better uh, opportunity for them to, to take in. And that seems to be the go-to for 3D printing design um, versus SolidWorks as in another big one in the name to drop. But there, that's more for traditional manufacturing, in my opinion. Fusion 360 is really made for this type of design. Um, all designs are shared and we'll have volunteers evaluating the cetera, just like you guys are doing right now, pretty much and giving feedback. And we want to make sure, and we're actually trying to work on a partnership right now that we'll be giving on like on demand feedback, actually, sorry, uh, real time feedback. It will, the software actually will do it for you. And we're trying to see if we can make that happen. Um, but just trying to figure that out right now. <laughs> um, so again, back to the fact that we're giving a lot more to the students. Once it's on our site, it's on marketplace. Anybody that purchases it, they're going to get 25% of every single sale. Every month, the check, just like a royalty, will be sent to them to support their robotics programs, their STEM programs, whatever it might be that they're trying to do. We're, we want to help out in that, in, that, in that regards to really kind of make these things happen because it seems like the funding is kind of evaporating at this point. So forward. The teacher aspect, um, really kind of don't need to touch upon that too much. It's pretty straightforward. Our objective is really just to empower and support the teachers as much as possible. There's definitely funds that are, again, evaporating in this area. They're there, but they're hard to now get because it's a saturated uh, grant process now, right? So it's very competitive. And unfortunately, there's not going to be enough to go around. So at the end of every season, we'll announce the winners. Um, but the one rule we're making is you have to be part of the STEM club because we're trying to work with students. But as a teacher, now that you're a part of this, the school, any teacher in the school can now apply for this. But again, it's a, it's part of the membership. Moving forward, uh, the student internship, if they're part of the, uh, what their school is part of it, they can apply for this. 
And most of our internships in the future, we had a bunch in, in person in Jersey City, but the future of what we're doing is actually going to be a lot, majority of it, 80% is going to be virtual. We're going to be uh, launching our first um, design challenge, product design challenge for internship this year and do it in a way where it's global. And we're going to do at least two out of the three internships we're doing. Are gonna, we're going to test it out and do it wherever they might be. And if they're all in the United States, they're all in the United States, but we'll see who applies. And, uh, and we'll give everybody updated on that. Um, so anyways, the, uh, the things they learn in our internship are pretty awesome. They learn how to, if they're in person, they get to learn uh, how to work on the machines. Uh, you know, that's always a fun thing to know, but it's good technical skills, again, problem solving. And again, these are lifelong skills that they can take into them when whatever field they end up going into. All right. So we have a long history in this. Like I explained, uh, we did one program in particular, biomedical engineering with four, uh, third, fourth, and fifth graders. And this is where this all actually comes from. This was years ago. And some of those students, um, again, we were focused on DFAM, empathy, and humanitarianism. And actually, they were designing this prosthetic for a student that was in the class. So, and that's, but that was pretty incredible to see that happen. Um, so I'm going to go circle back to that real quick. And the fact of the matter is some of those students actually have gone on to work for us or give us feedback and emailed me or connected me on, on LinkedIn. They're actually going into the biomedical engineering field now, or at least they're getting ready to, because they're still in high school, but they're getting ready to do so. So in that part itself is extremely exciting for us to know and be able to tell people that this is what it does. These are the results. So we're not just talking about a program that we just, you know, thought out of thin air. No, this is all based on our history. It's based on experience. And as I will always say, it's the Pico journey. And that's what it all comes back to. And so I'm excited to present this. Uh, and we're, we're just starting to put it out there. Uh, we've been working on this for quite a while. And again, it officially launches in um, fall, September 2023. So I have a couple of little things that people have asked so far as I've explained this. There's a QR code, so feel free to scan that to fill out for more information so I can send you the details on, on actually how to sign up, et cetera, um, and whatnot. The cost for every school, and in the United States at least, it will be economical, $99 for the entire school. I don't care if there's 100 students in a school or, or 3,000. It's the same price. This is just access to what we're going to be giving as resources, the webinar. We can have endless amount of people just like this, um, et cetera. And whoever actually wants to engage in it, you know, they will. And because they have an interest in this, there's plenty of kids that do. So we, we find that to be a one size fits all $99 to take care of the administrative cost to run this. And then obviously we have to get sponsors in order to, as we scale. Um, all the benefits are included on limited students and, um, you know, the, it's live. They can just submit as they go. You know, the things will be posted. They'll have access to that back office to, to know what is the details of the rubric, et cetera. And they'll be able to find out what they need in order to submit their designs for fundraisers, their designs for the challenges and the product design. So I appreciate everybody's time tonight. This is actually the first time I've ever presented this in this manner. So again, bear with me as I have to practice this a little more. But uh, thanks again for everybody's time. And now we'll open it up to uh, any questions from anybody. Great presentation. Thank you. I, I really like what you're aiming for here. Um, I, I do have a, a couple of quick questions. Sure. So you are, there's a lot going on in, in the levels, high school, and then I understood the elementary and middle school going together. It was, I got lost in the weeds with the design challenges, internships, and can, can you just clarify that just a little bit if I was a teacher to understand? Those are, those are just benefits that they have access to. The, okay. core, the core focus, especially for the elementary and middle school, they have access to compete in the design challenges, but really for us, we see it as um, we need to focus on the fundraising, right? And in the high school level, that's where we're going to focus more on the design challenge and the product and the internship. For teachers, we just want to give them access to grant money, and especially when we get sponsors, to help them and support them. So we added that benefit. So there's really, again, breaking down, it's the design challenges. It's the fundraising. I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought there. Uh, the grants for the teachers. And that's actually, honestly, where we really need to focus when it comes down to it. Okay.
but um, very, very good question. I don't, I don't have access to YouTube right now, so I can't see if there are any other questions. Just... I think I have a chat here too, so maybe there was. I had a question for you. It was about the hand, but I realized oh. it was just a, um, a kit. Oh, no, no. The, uh, the hand that we, so that was, uh, so all the students actually designed their own hand and they used Arduino. So they used Tinkercad circuits actually to make it work. And actually one of the kids, uh, we gave them code originally in the third, fourth, and the grade, but they actually rewrote it. And they also were able to reach out. This was an interesting story. They actually reached out to corporate sponsors and had things donated in order to enhance their project. They were the ones that won. Um, but that was pretty incredible to see a, a third, four, uh, they were fourth grade, I believe. They were fourth graders reaching out to CEOs asking for free stuff to help wow. them with the project. And um, I couldn't find the picture that I really would love to show of Christian, who the hand actually was able to go to. So we've met and up I with him and supported him for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Sorry, was I breaking up there for a second? No, it was me. Okay. I apologize. I was looking to YouTube to see if there were any questions and the audio came on. Okay. That is a great story though about those kids, fourth graders reaching out. I love empowering young people, you know, to take responsibility and, and take charge for how they want to change the world. I'm totally about advocating for that. That's my mission as well. It's, 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 a, it's a tough one, right? <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I get to live. I get to live vicariously through my own son, though. Too. He's he's now ten. He works for us a little doing operation stuff, but uh, he's actually this summer going to be start to learn Fusion 360 because he only knows Tinkercad as of right now. Um, mm -hmm. and he's going to be taking on a product line. Pico Studio actually has fifteen different categories that we're developing product that we're only making locally, and we're actually opening up our first one in Jersey City, and eventually we'll open them up all in the world. But everything's design, manufacturing, and showroom, the whole nine yards, and event space in one location. So that's what this is all about. And we hope to be able to invite students, parents, teachers, et cetera, to these places to let them get immersed in this design atmosphere, which really is all about creativity. And I'm a big, since I was nine, entrepreneur. So that's what this is really kind of coming back to. It's like, I was just that kid that wanted to do something else, something different always. And now I get to support others that have that same kind of mindset through all of this. I'm a futurist and an educator as well. I'll be reaching out to you on LinkedIn for sure. I appreciate that. Very curious about how how you're going to roll this out. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to say um, I didn't know what DFAM was before today, but I do now. That's completely honestly fine. That term has really only been really being used for the past year or two. Um, and I, I use it because I believe in it. Some people actually that are in the in the industry um, actually did, have refused to use it. I believe that it needs to be utilized because it is a different type of design. Yeah, and you you can't you can really honestly not use traditional CAD skills to do what we're doing and accomplishing. If you were doing that, uh, the products that we're creating and we actually have cut to thirty three to fifty percent uh, costs from overseas would not be able to be accomplished. If you did it traditionally, they would actually cost 30 to 40% more to produce in this way. And you couldn't even deliver because the demand would, out, would outpace, you know, your ability to deliver. You need to be able to print faster. And it's always about less is more. And that's what really DFAM centers around. It's like getting, you know, the application, delivering on the application, et cetera, but understanding that you can't overcomplicate the process. Keep it as simple as possible, but also understand that you have to get inside the design and in the printer, if that makes sense to you. It's it's a okay. quite a unique uh, process when it comes down to it, especially I the different- I have another question for okay. you though. Go for it. <laughs> so you're making this available to students and teachers in the United States. What about Daria in Mexico? Oh no, everybody in the world can participate in this. Okay, good. It's just a matter of the school. We're going to be reaching out to the international schools, uh, you name it. That's our goal. We are not going to, so this is just has a flat rate fee and anyone in the world can do this. There's no in-person, right? So it can be done anywhere. Um, I've done, you know, plenty of work with international schools and I feel like that actually would be a good fit. Or if a school does have that, or we can get sponsors to support people in, you know, Latin America, in Asia, wherever it might be, 
I am happy to entertain that. It's not, there's no, there's not going to be any difference for us to do it as long as there's someone that we can communicate honestly in English. I mean, even though my partner in crime is, uh, is Chinese, so she speaks Chinese. So if we need that, I do have that, <laughs> but that's the only other language on my team that really would be able to, to work with. Well, in the last few minutes, we have another question from YouTube sure. that I want to run by you. Can, sure. can or will your program eventually offer certifications or accreditation to educators? So that is Dr. Kelly Hart, um, the CEO, Chief Education Officer of our company. She's been with us for a while. She, that's her goal. She wants okay. to do that. Uh, we just honestly have not had the bandwidth, very transparent, the bandwidth to do so. We were thinking about list, uh, uh, going out to reaching out to uh, STEM.org um, as an example there. Um, I know a few of my friends in the market have done that and got certified that way as well. And that should carry over in a good way. Um, but we are still exploring that. So if anybody that's listening or hears this, uh, feel free to reach out on the, to contact at PicoSolutions.com. If you'd like to help us with that part, we just right now we're doing a lot, as you can see. And I don't want to stretch my team's bandwidth any more than I already have. Um, along with myself, right? So thank you. Wise. Yeah. Rock and roll. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate everybody's time. Um, if you feel free to email me or, or whatnot, or hit me up on WhatsApp. <laughs> All right. All right. Rock Thanks again, everybody. Thank you, Michael. Right. Absolutely. Thank you.